Comedy writer, Graeme Linehan. So he's known for a father tat, a fantastic father tat. Absolutely <laughs> love that. Black books as well, another good one. Anyway, he's accused trans rights activists of bullying and harassment. Yes, Graeme says that speaking out for women's sex-based rights has seen him condemned as a bigot, losing not only work, but his social media platforms as well. In an interview, he detailed how police officers turned up at his family home and that members of his family were also harassed by online trolls. He isn't the only person to raise the issue of intimidation by trans activists, as Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling this weekend highlighted some of the threats of violence and intimidation she has been subject to over social media. Well, joining us now to discuss this further is Caroline Farrow, campaign director of Citizen Go, who has herself experienced uh, harassment and intimidation by activists as well. Thank you for joining us this morning, Caroline. I mean, it is some um, quite shocking, um, some of the uh, uh, reports that J.K. Rowling has put forward about death threats. I think she said that um, she could paint her entire house with the death and yeah. rape threats that she receives. I mean, why is this being tolerated, that people are facing threats and intimidation for holding what is actually quite a mainstream view about gender and sex? It's a very good point, Mercy. And I think it's, it's actually a very small group of uh, activists on social media. But they, what we have to remember is that um, we've got institutions like the police force and the local education authorities captured by this gender ideology. So like Graham Linehan, you know, I too have had death threats. I've had rape threats. I had an entire blog set up. It was a hate blog, We Hate Caroline Farrow. It ran for six months. There were death threats. There were rape threats. There were threats of acid attacks against my children. My husband was outed. His face well, not I say outed, you know, his, his mobile phone was published. Um, our whole family was targeted. Um, I was also targeted by the same two activists who uh, targeted Graham Linehan, um, Dr. Adrian Harrop, who has faced sanction from the General Medical Council now for his deplorable behaviour, and also Stephanie Hayden, who has sued, I think, around 30 people over the last five years uh, for the same thing, for harassment, for misgendering. Um, and I think it's, it's literally that people see the transgender issue and they think, gosh, you can't be mean and you can't be nasty. I mean, I, I get a, a very small taste of, of what JK Rowling receives um, simply because I have fewer followers than her. But but Joanne uh, tweeted me a couple of weeks ago just to say big love, Caroline. And uh, Pink News, who have smeared Graham Linehan repeatedly, uh, ran another hate article against me. And, and I think it, it's literally that institutions just can't see beyond this, you know, transgender, you know, that we're being transphobic, that we're being unkind uh, to, to transgender people. And in fact, the police, in response to this hate blog that, that was set up against me and, and threatened my entire family, just said to me, Caroline, please, can you stop talking about transgender issues on Twitter? You know, there's absolutely um, no balance. And, and I have huge sympathy uh, with what happened. Yeah, but but you, should, you should never... Yeah, Caroline, you should never stop talking about it on Twitter because that's how people win, right? It's the silencing of it. And you've hit on numerous good points there that I want to pick up on because just because people drape themselves in a rainbow flag doesn't mean they can't behave like the mafia, right? And they want to take everything from these people. They want to take your job. They want to take your wife. They want to take your kids. They want to take it all, OK? They don't want you to be left with anything left in your life. They want you to just be there in a puddle of yourself with the smouldering wreckage of your life sitting there behind you. And that is not very tolerant, is it? That's not very nice. And actually, a lot of the time, these people are the polar opposite of what they claim to be, aren't they? That's completely right. I mean, it's so interesting. All the time I get accusations of hatred, you know, levelled at me. And I, I don't hate anybody. I respect everybody. And, you know, if they wanted to, you know, take away rights from um, lesbian, gay and transgender people, then I would be there absolutely marching on the street. Of course, everybody has equal human dignity and equal human rights. But having a particular point of view, which, you know, Graham and J.K. Rowling have when it comes to the safeguarding of children, doesn't mean that you're full of hate. And, and you know, one example being was the other day, um, I came across one of these rainbow crossings. I'd never seen one before. And it was dark, you know, it was twilight was coming in and these kids ran onto it from out of nowhere. The lights weren't working, the traffic lights. And I had to slam the brakes on really quickly because my brain didn't quite adjust to this sort of rainbow thing on, 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 on the ground. I didn't see it properly. And I just said this on Twitter. I said, these things are a death trap. Um, and, you know, I ended up having to block about a thousand people because the abuse 
was just so extreme. And all I had said yeah. was rainbow crossings yeah. are, are, are and, dangerous and, and hazard. Yeah, and Caroline, don't you think, I mean, one of the things I've been worrying about is it seems quite counterproductive um, to the cause that the gender identity advocates want to uh, support. Because to me, as an ordinary person, if I see on one side ordinary women raising legitimate and genuine concerns about safeguarding, protecting their own rights, and another group and um, basically harassing, intimidating and saying death threats for holding another opinion to which actually most people have yeah. held for hundreds, if not thousands of years, then, you know, you probably feel pushed to the one yeah. side or another. It's quite a polarising thing to do to threaten people. So would you not agree that this could actually be quite counterproductive on the part of the trans activists? Yes, it is completely trans. Uh, sorry, it's completely um, counterproductive, but it's also very, very frightening. So, you know, I almost got um, prosecuted because I misgendered um, Susie Green's child, uh, and I called out. Uh, the fact that Susie Green had taken her, her Zen son to Thailand on his 16th birthday to have all this surgery. And I called it castration and mutilation and, you know, abusive. Now, of course, that was very strong words, but I used those words because I wanted people to be aware that when we're talking about trans transitioning of children, that we are talking about very severe, long lasting, permanent uh, measures which lead to lifelong sterility. Um, you know, this, this is major, major surgery. This isn't just putting on a dress. This is, you know, having having sex organs removed. And I found myself under investigation uh, by the police for that. Um, like Graham was, I was sued in the High Court twice for £100,000 each time. You know, the, the cases went away because um, there was no case. Uh, I was threatened with being sued a third time in January by the same activist. And, and the problem is, is that uh, these people are using the police force and you know the judicial yeah. system to, to do the you know formally harass others for you and the reason as patrick say that said that they want to take away your family your children your, your job i mean I've, I've been really really lucky in that regard in that you yeah. know i've had such wonderful supportive employers but the reason they want to do that is pour encourager les autres you know in order to right. st to show ordinary women what happens when they start okay. speaking up for their yes. sex based like, like the mafia, like the mafia. Ka Caroline, thank you very, very much. Great to have you on the show, as always. Of course, Caroline Farrow there, campaign director of Citizen Go. And yeah, I'm, I'm going to start calling them the Rainbow Mafia. I mean, j just quickly, I actually had a similar experience of oh, this. You here know, we go. La last Sunday, I was in a pub and I took a picture of the fact that there wasn't clearly signed. Saw it you know, female toilets, and it was crazy that it said men's and gender neutral, and, you know, many of my friends went to ask for the female toilets, and they were pointed to the gender neutral one, and I raised this on Twitter, and overwhelmingly people were supportive of it, of but there was a small and incredibly intense group of people that, you know, were sending me hundreds of messages calling me a transphobe, calling me, you know, a yeah. trans hater, for just raising a concern uh. about the lack of single-sex provision for women. Well. And if, it, and I, I've, you know, and I do think that actually, when this happens, this pushes ordinary people like me who have a lot of sympathy with people that have a sense of um, difference between how they view themselves and their body. But if you are choosing, if you are asking me to choose between that kind of activism and women raising concerns, and I am going to choose women yeah, raising of course. concerns. Absolutely. And I think it's really counterproductive and polarizing to sympathy and empathy towards the cause um, that these advocates are, activists are trying to put forward, because I actually do have a lot of sympathy for them, but I don't accept the intimidation and harassment no. that women are going through. No, but no because, because that, that's not the way that that's not the principles upon which this country and indeed the world should operate. So, I mean, there's a, there's a bloke who was, he was a friend of a friend, right? So, and obviously we're not going to name him here. Class himself as, as a non-binary pansexual, so not, uh, not, not part of the trans community. But he's adamant, absolutely adamant, right, that, that basically being a woman is, is just a feeling. Well, he's six foot four, he's got a, got a hulking great big beard, he looks like he kind of, you know, is a, is a massive, massive rugby player, that kind of guy. Well, I'm sorry, but excuse me, for thinking that maybe you're not best placed to tell women what a woman but is. But the thing is, we already know, we know what a woman is. This is the thing. Yeah. We, it's either people that are lying and pretending to, you know, fend off, fend off um, activists, or everybody else who say, well, I, I kind of, I know what my mother, my sister, you know, my yeah. wife, my girlfriend, my female friends are. I know what makes them a woman. I mean, human have a, humans have evolved for hundreds of thousands of years to be able to sex people on sight. You can literally look at pe people in a row, shave their hair off, you know, all wear the same clothes, and you will be able to determine who is a man and who is a woman. Yeah. We all know what it is already. No, exactly. And actually, again, we were saying earlier, we were wondering whether or not we should every single time we get an MP on now.
yeah. regardless of what they're on to talk about. Just ask them right at the end what their definition of a woman is. But the jury's out on whether or not we should do that. But, but I, I'm keen to know, because if you can't answer that question, I'm sorry, but you shouldn't be anywhere near power. Anyway, keep all your thoughts coming into us on email, <laughs> gb 